everyone, I'm Christy Lynn from christylynnmusic.com and welcome to Harp Help where every Thursday we grow together in our musical journey as harpists. Today as you can see I'm not in my normal spot and I've got a guest here. This is my friend Chris Berger who's also a musician here Hello. in Cape Town. Do you want to introduce yourself or what you do Chris? I can yeah. Um, my name is Chris Berger as she mentioned. I'm 25 years old. I've been in this industry for a good couple of years but full time for about a year and a half now. And I'm an indie folk singer-songwriter. Yep. Yep, singing and playing the guitar. Yep. And Chris and I have just recorded a cover of Ed Sheeran's Perfect, which will be up on my channel before too long. And yep. I'm playing the harp and singing, and he's also singing and playing the guitar. So we're pretty excited about that. And we're also going to record another video, which will go up on Chris's channel. So I'll put a link for you to check out Chris's YouTube channel. I think he's got some really awesome songs on there. Um, but let's get um, yep. chatting about today's topic. Yep. So we thought we'd chat to you guys. Um, Chris and I have both done quite a lot of performing, live performing, and we've got a little bit of experience with how to talk to people when we perform. And so we thought we'd share that with you guys, what we've learned about how to talk to audience members who come up to you after a performance, and also how to turn those people into longer term fans, and hopefully um, make a little bit of money when they're enjoying your performance. There's no reason why you can't make a little bit of money out of that. Um, so, Chris, do you have any specific ideas about that? Yeah, um, so first thing, um, I've kind of learned, uh, just kind of from seeing other people's interactions, uh, other musicians I've worked with, um, what what kind of might put people off, what puts me off personally, is someone who's like hard selling, who like comes up to you and be like, hey, will you buy my CD, da 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 And like, although sometimes people might be like, okay, cool, yeah, I'll buy a CD, or here, like I'll take a business card or whatever, it's, it's re I've realized really music and being successful in music, in the music career, in, in, in any career in fact, it's just, it's about your relationship with people and your ability to have good people skills. So, um, first thing I'd say is, like, don't be such a hard sell kind of person. Like, still you want to build connection. Um, but what I've learned is that if I want to, um, actually, if, if I take an interest in another person, that's a much better way than saying, hey, this is my CD, will you buy it or whatever. Like, actually go up to someone and, and like, if someone, I, uh, that's, like I said, first thing, blah, I'm mumbling. Uh, first thing, <laughs> If you if you see someone clap or engage with your music in some way or smile at you or say hey great job or something, mm -hmm. that's a good indication um, to say hey they you can chat to them more. If someone hasn't really paid me much attention during a show, I'm unlikely to go up to them and say hey here's my CD or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if someone shows an interest like claps or engages mm -hmm. with me, um, then I usually go up to them and I try to start up a conversation. And again, it's not my goal is not to sell them an album or to give them a business card, it's actually just to build a connection um, with them and, and, and actually say, hey, thanks for listening and, and really try to develop a relationship, even though it's only for a short amount of time, mm -hmm. but kind of build the friendship and um, in a more personal way. Mm -hmm. And if at some point they're like, hey, um, do you have an album or something or do you have a business card, then I can give it to them. Yeah. Um, or if someone has clapped, I'll go up to them and be like, hey, thank you so much for your support. Like if you have Spotify or iTunes, here's my card or something. Yeah. And so you try and make it more personal. That's that's. Mm -hmm. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah, I think we're particularly talking about both Chris and I have had residencies or currently have residencies in hotel restaurants and other restaurants. Mm -hmm. So that's particularly what we're talking about, where not everyone is necessarily looking at you and paying you attention because it's background mm -hmm. music. But yeah. when someone does take the time to look at you, and sometimes Chris was actually watching me perform the other night at a restaurant, and yeah. when people sometimes clap at the end of the song, that's when you know you need to go and chat to that person. Yeah. yeah um, sure. So exactly. Exactly. I'll ask, um, since, especially since the hotel where I'm performing, a lot of people are international guests, mm. so I'll ask them where they're from, just have a little chat, find something in common. Mm. Um, I think that's a really great way to meet people, you meet some really interesting people, and at the same time you build a little bit of trust, and I don't know um, how you feel about it, but I get a little bit more bold. Once I've built that connection, I'm like, I don't know if you noticed, but I have a CD here, and would you like to take a look at it? And then they don't have to say yes or no to buying it. Yeah, then I go yeah. and fetch my CD and I show yeah. it to them, and once they have it in their hands and they see it looks quite professional, and um, maybe some of the songs I've performed yeah. are on that CD, then a lot of the time, once people have given me the permission to show them the CD, almost every time they'll buy it. Mm -hmm. um, unless they use the excuse that they don't have money with them, which I find very suspicious if you're at a restaurant. <laughs> 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 but maybe they don't have cash. Because somebody's um, used card. Yeah. <laughs> but um, 
my experience with business cards has been a little bit of a a changing kind of growth and changing along the way because I used to the first thing I would offer is a business card and then I found that people just forget and so you lose the opportunity of selling them a CD and you lose the opportunity of making a longer term mm. connection so I try to only give business cards if the person asks or if they give me a business card so that I can follow up with them by emailing them afterwards yeah. Yeah. Um, I tend to more offer the CD so that's they can go home with something that they'll actually listen to to remember me by. Yeah. And um, I know you talked about recently, Chris, that you want to start up or you're about to start up an email list. Um, yeah. So what's your intention with that? That's something I've been doing, but I want to hear yeah. why you want to start with that. So I, I realize a big part of music industry, obviously, is social media. And although it can kind of be a bit addictive and maybe negative in some ways, um, as musicians, it's a great marketing tool, obviously, and it's a, it's a, it's a useful platform and a necessary platform as well. Um, but the reason for the mailing list is that um, I can really have a personal like connection with each of my fans. So I've actually messaged um, friends personally and been like, hey, um, I'd love to let you know when I release a new YouTube video or a music video or when I have like a major gig uh, coming up. So the idea is not to spam people and be like, hey, I'm playing a show here every week, da 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 It's to really um, have a more personal connection. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, um, like I mentioned, people can miss your posts on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, etc. So mm -hmm. at least they get an email on that, like, and then you're in their minds because they're like, oh, okay, he's got a gig or this is a new music video. Mm -hmm. And that's a nice way to do it, yeah. The other thing I found that's really helpful about email lists, so I take a clipboard with me whenever I perform and then okay. I take people's emails um, if they if they seem to if they seem to be like really enjoying my music. So if yeah. they if they're just enjoying it, I'll offer them a CD, maybe they'll buy it or not. But yeah. if they carry on chatting to me and they say, I really like your voice or I think you should sing this song or that song, yeah. then I can see maybe um, it's worth taking the kind of risk or the step of asking for their email address because it feels a little bit bold, but it's really yeah. worth the risk because people People often agree and um, give me their email address and the great thing is that then they get to see the behind the scenes and mm -hmm. they feel like they're really um, a whole other level of supporter and they mm -hmm. they get to be special like behind the scenes and um, also it means that it relies on me to follow up with them rather than me relying on them remembering about me yeah. so if I give them a card and I want them to like me on Facebook Firstly, it means they have to be active on Facebook and want to do that or yeah. follow my YouTube channel. A lot of people in South Africa don't subscribe to YouTube channels ever. Um, mm. And whereas with the email list, everyone uses email and I get their email address, which means I have the control of remembering to follow up with them. And yeah. then that's really great. And um, if they want to unsubscribe or from my email list, they can. But a lot of the time they'll they'll stay your fan for a lot longer because yeah. it comes right into their um, inbox and yeah, they'll yeah, probably sure. read it. <laughs> Back to the business card album things. Um, one thing I've noticed, a lot of my mates who are musicians don't have business cards. And I think that's a really like, like it's not a bad thing, but like it's a really beneficial thing to have. Um, again, like we said, we play in a lot of venues that might have international uh, clientele or guests. And so, um, especially platforms like Spotify or iTunes, Apple Music, um, if a guest doesn't, you know, have cash on them s for some reason, or they just, they see you playing and you're actually in the middle of the song and they want to find out what your name is and you, you know, in hotels you're not really allowed posters and banners and things. So have a little pack of business cards on your, the side of the stage or your, your, your mixing desk or somewhere that's like visible, fairly, fairly visible with, with your CDs as well. And uh, I think it's just so beneficial. Like I can just give a card to someone if they clap, and I, um, I just found the tension. Sorry, is that if someone claps and says, "Hey, great job, um, great gig," and then they just walk off, I'll mm. never see that guy, that person again. Mm. And I've actually lost the potential of having a fan or a person that actually is like engaged. So, mm. um, if someone says, "Hey, great gig," and they're about to walk off, I said, "Hey, um, I don't know if you have Spotify or anything, but here's my mm. card," and maybe they're from Australia or the US or UK. And at least they can go home and be like, hey, I saw this guy. And then my links will all be there and they can find me on Spotify or whatever. And then I can actually listen to my music. Yeah. And so business cards is a huge, it's, it's a really important thing to have. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so another great thing I've found when I've met people from my yeah. performances and I get their email address and they go on my email list, when I've yeah. made that extra special effort to really connect with them yeah. in real yeah. life, yeah. Um, they feel like they're my friend. And in some ways they yeah. really are. They might have just known me for a very short time in person. But when they hear the updates about my music, yeah. I send out an email or I send a, a link to a video, yeah. they're like, this is my friend, Christy Lynn, that I saw performing in Cape yeah. Town. Yeah. And so you can end up with a long-term fan um, or supporter who can be with you for the next 10, 20 years following yeah. your music online. And that is so valuable. They can buy your next album. They might, I'm on Patreon, so they might support me on Patreon. Yeah. And you can actually end up having someone who, in the long term, um, you have a, a good relationship with them and they're in, they end up buying things from you mm -hmm. over and over again and so you have this great lifetime value of a supporter that it's just worth putting that extra effort in of being really friendly genuinely caring about them just mm -hmm. like you mentioned mm -hmm. and maybe following up with a personal email so that they feel yeah. like you really care and it wasn't just an act yeah. um the other thing i try to do is i really try to remember people's names if they repeat um, guests like sometimes people will return like three months later and stay yeah. at the same hotel yeah. and I try really hard to remember a lot of the time I forget because yeah. I see so many people all the time but I try and ask people's names even if I've forgotten I try not to be too embarrassed to ask their names so that if I see them a few times mm. um, eventually I'll recognize them I actually have it a bit of an embarrassing story of a guest that clearly knows my name and every time they see me they're like oh hi christy lynn and i know that they told me their name once yeah. and i cannot yeah. remember it and now it's like too far gone i can't ask them what their name is because it's yeah. like a year that they've been <laughs> greeting what, me what you what you can do what in the past like i've realized how important names are to people i think it's it's a really special thing um there's a book uh, by dale Carnegie where he says the name is the most important sound to someone mm. you know um and i think that's so true so like um, what I have done, for example, like if I've worked in, a, say, a hotel somewhere and there's a lot of staff and waiters that I actually can't remember all of their names all the time because maybe I only see them once a month or once every few weeks. But I've made uh, little notes on my phone and I'll be like, okay, this venue, and I'll write down the names. And then like before I go, it's kind of like a cheat sheet in a sense. Um, That's so clever. And you just look at the names and you kind of refresh mm -hmm. the names. And it sounds a bit like, um, like, like, not like weird to kind of do that, but at least you're taking the effort to actually kind of mm. put their names in your memory. Yeah. And that's, that's a helpful way, even if it's, yeah, you know, I should yeah. totally do that. I've done that before with other jobs where I wrote next to the person's name a description of what they look like <laughs> because I would forget who the person was I've, even though I had the name. I've never done that. So maybe I should do that. I think it would help me. That's weird. Or like That's what so part weird. of the hotel they sit in because they often sit at the same table. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, well. Do yeah. you have any other ideas of like how to... Um, maybe how, how do you genuinely connect with someone? How do you get the courage to go up to somebody when you're taking a break? Like they're sitting there innocently at their table yeah. and you have yeah. to find something to say or some excuse of why you're going to go up and talk to them. I think, yeah, I, I, again, like I said, you wait for, obviously you wait for some kind of response or engagement from their side. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel genuinely like a fairly good people person, so I don't have too much trouble doing it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I try, one of the best things is just actually just to talk about the other person and just really mm -hmm. take an interest in who they are, what they're doing and mm -hmm. like ask about, you know, what they're doing in Cape Town or mm -hmm. where they're from, or, you know, their story. Mm -hmm. And that, that really helps to, to kind of put the focus on someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I often start with the, um, the line, like, I noticed you watching me, um, mm -hmm. or I noticed mm -hmm. you're enjoying the music. Yeah. Thanks so much for listening. And then that's like a reason to go up to them kind of thing. And then I'll ask them where they're from mm -hmm. or, um. Yeah, you know, what they've, I don't know, why they're there or something like that yeah. to show a genuine interest. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything else you can think of that you'd like to share? I think actually something I've, I've realized recently, um, I realized how kind of addictive social media can be. And so it's so easy for me to, in between sets at, at gigs, go and like sit on my phone and look at, you know, Instagram or whatever and see what's happening. And uh, I just realized like it's, it's almost like, although it's keeping me busy, it's actually not benefiting. I'm not, I'm not making the most of the time that I'm at a gig. So mm. the one week I actually just tried this. I, I, I like went on social media for a good couple of weeks, about three weeks and just got my manager to, um, just to help me out for a while. And, uh, what I would do, I'd actually leave my phone in the car, switch it off. And mm. during the, the breaks, I'd actually go up and make an effort to talk to someone, you know, mm. and just build connections. 
and afterwards I felt so much better about the gig and I said hey that actually went well like I met this person and this person mm -hmm. they bought an album they they got a business card and you know mm -hmm. and it, and you feel much better and you and it just makes the gig much more successful mm -hmm. rather than just playing a gig mm -hmm. you know because if you're just going somewhere to play and then go home like mm -hmm. you know you're earning money but it's 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 more than that you like you want to build relationships and mm -hmm. and build your fan base and that's that's ultimately what what gigs are helping you do as mm -hmm. well yeah and just be real and then you feel more real yeah. and like a worthwhile person when you're actually connecting yeah. with people um, another thing, uh, kind of what I'm noticing from what both of us are saying is that um, you've got to be kind of giving in your attitude towards other people rather than thinking, oh, well, this person needs to buy my album or I want to get something from them. Yeah. I mean, that's realistic. But yeah. it, if you focus your effort on um, talking to the other person, finding out about them and more um, like serving them in the way you approach them yeah. then I think it actually benefits you more in the long run like mm -hmm. sometimes at performances there'll be young children there and I'm not going to gain anything by being kind to young children I mean maybe I'll look better in the eyes of the parents but <laughs> often those aren't the parents who are going to the people mm -hmm. who often buy an album because they're distracted by their children but it can make a real difference in someone's day yeah. if if I show the child the harp and let them try playing on it and at yeah. one wedding I um I let the child play the harp for quite a long time and told her more about how like gave a little mini lesson and um afterwards her her parents emailed me and sent me footage of her playing and it's actually on my instagram and it was a great experience yeah. of just connecting with a real need because the child was really interested and it gave the parents a chance to take mm. a step back cool. and not have to supervise so closely yeah. and yeah. then um someone else learns about the harp so I think that's mm. something worthwhile to remember that although we're it, we're doing our job, we can go beyond that and serve other people and it helps yeah. them more and it probably helps us more in yeah. the long run as well. That, sorry, that's something I just thought of now. Um, I was chatting to my manager and uh, uh, another friend of mine, Daniel Barron, he's also a singer in South Africa, and I was asking, talking about the tension of like, when you're playing, say, a residency gig, um, Maybe at a hotel or somewhere where it's more background, you know, some, some gigs you play and pe people are actually watching you perform, but some you'll be playing kind of background music and that's normal uh, for a lot of artists. Um, but how do you face that tension of like the loneliness and maybe the discouragement of like not, no one really paying you any attention? And just what you said about like actually helping someone, um, my friend Dan just said like, hey, like you never know, sometimes your purpose is bigger than just playing in front of like thousands of people. Maybe your purpose is singing and encouraging someone with a song at the bar, you know, just one mm. person. And that's, and that's, and that's mm. part of your purpose. So like, mm. um, I'd say that like, that's something I struggle with as well, but mm -hmm. I try to remind myself that, um, you know, if I'm encouraging one person at a gig, that, that, that's a win, you know, I don't have to play for thousands of people to like fulfill my purpose or whatever. Mm. So yeah. Yeah. I often have people coming up to me after a performance at a, a restaurant where I think no one was listening because no yeah. one was clapping no one was looking at me in between songs or during the songs yeah. and I feel like it didn't make a difference maybe it was quite a noisy night and um, it was quite busy and I felt like my music maybe wasn't even heard those are sometimes the nights when people will come up to me on their way out and say mm. that I made their day and that yeah. they were crying in the mm. corner and I didn't even know <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and so I think don't underestimate the impact you can have by connecting with someone through your music and also through talking to them mm -hmm. um, because sometimes it happens I'm sure then imagine how many times it's happening when the person doesn't even tell you yeah if they do make that effort every now and then there's probably 10 more times where it was touching someone and they just yeah. didn't say anything yeah. so Chris what do you do if mm. someone asks you for a song request and it's a song you don't know <laughs> <laughs> that's always the worst like <laughs> Like I, I've played, I've played some like bars, like like not dodgy bars, but like some bars where it's smoky and lots of drunk people, and like some drunk chicks will like stumble up to me and be like, "Can you play Summer of '69?" You know, like and Brian Adams and all this other stuff, and I just I'm like like no, I, I don't do that song, <laughs> but no, in a, in a polite way, yeah. I'll be like, um, "Sorry, I don't actually know that song. Um, I love the song, but I don't I don't know how to play it yet." Um, but I say, "Can I? Can I?" play something else for you do you like so and so so and so you know mm. I'll mention some other artists that I do currently cover so um, you, you try and suggest something that's kind of similar yeah or... so try compromise because you mm. can't you can't know all the songs in the world you know mm. and, and some people are maybe like they expect you to know this person and this they person think you're like, a jukebox exactly and that, <laughs> that can be quite frustrating especially when like we like solo artists or mm. we like actually original artists trying to 
um, write and create our own music. Um, you don't want to learn every other song in the whole world. No, exactly. I mean, it's helpful. It's beneficial for doing like like residency gigs and hotels where you have to play for three or four hours. Mm. But that's not the ultimate goal. And mm. my my philosophy is always actually play a song that you actually enjoy. Like I try find popular songs, but songs that I actually want to play. Like I don't just play a song because someone wants me to play it. Mm. Um, like if, it's, if it's a wedding and someone specifically requests a song, sure I'll learn it. Mm. But um, it's a lot more fulfilling if you're actually playing songs you enjoy and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think um, that's quite a positive response because I had someone ask me for a song request the other day and I responded like I always do. If I don't know the song, I'll either suggest something mm. similar or I'll say, I'm so sorry, I don't know that song, but that's a great suggestion. If I think it's a great suggestion, I won't <laughs> lie. And then I'll say, oh, maybe I can write it down and I'll try and learn it. Um, yeah. Maybe I'll know it next time you come kind of thing. I won't mm. make promises if I don't think I can keep it, but I'll yeah. at least say, I'll check it out. That sounds like yeah. a great suggestion. Um, or at least I'll engage with them and say, oh, no, that's not a song I know, but I've heard it before, and that is a great song. Um, and I responded like that to one gentleman, and he said to me that he commended me on my response. He said that sometimes he's requested songs from musicians, and they react so grumpily, like they get cross with him for asking, for asking him, them to play a song that they don't know, or they barely respond at all. And I think that's so rude. Like, you don't yeah. have to know every song in the world, but I think you can make a little effort to at least be nice about it yeah. and connect with the person. Because what it means, when someone asks you, yeah. okay, unless they're drunk, then they might just... I don't know what their reasoning is, but often when a person asks you to play a certain song, it's because they like your voice, they like what you're doing, and they like the song, and they'd like to hear you doing that. Yeah, so it's yeah. actually a compliment, even if you don't know the song. Yeah. Um, and it's worth it to treat it like that and so, respect them. So I had a funny story. Like, I'm sure a lot of artists will understand this tension, but please, to listeners and supporters, don't come and talk to like us when we're playing. Like while in the middle of a song, song. <laughs> I'm like I'm busy singing. Like someone's trying to ask you. So I'm like, I'm, can't you see I'm singing? Like what? What the flip? So yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> come talk to me in between a song. That's yeah, fine. That That's happens. fine. Yeah. I just smile sweetly and like hope that they get the, <laughs> the picture. Yeah. It happens surprisingly often. You think some people would just know? Like, well, you know? Can't, it's hard to talk and sing at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they don't know the song well enough to know like you're like in the middle of the song. Yeah, like, I yeah. don't know. I think also sometimes people are in a hurry and they just want to say their thing and move on. Uh, okay. um, That's true. But I just smile at them and <laughs> sometimes I stop the song if I feel like it's appropriate. But you're on a sound system so everyone can hear you really clearly. With my, uh, yeah. When I'm playing background music, I'm playing acoustically so it's quite soft in the background sometimes and then I feel like it's okay if I just end the song a little early and chat to them but most mm -hmm. of the time I just smile sweetly and hope that they'll try again at the end of the song. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it's not the worst case to like miss a few lyrics if you want to say hey, hey here's a business card or yeah. my name is so and so or chat to you. So bit, still yeah. be nice about it even if it's like Yeah, annoying. yeah. Do, do your best, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. I think that's enough for today. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank for you for having me, Christy me. Lynn. And uh, yeah, yeah, remember to, to the check subscribers. out. Yeah, check out Chris's channel. Um, I think Thanks. you'll enjoy what he has on there. And if you do a little search, you'll also find the other song that we did together a little while ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we'll soon be uploading the other songs that we've been doing at the moment. Yeah. So remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and put a little comment down below if you've had any similar experiences or if you have any other questions about this topic maybe Chris and I will chat about it again sometime yeah. and um, yeah subscribe I put up new videos every Thursday and I'll see you again next week bye Cheerio. <laughs>